Hello, welcome to this video on multivariable optimization. Back in Calc 1, after taking the derivative, we learned how you could use the derivative to find local max and local min. Well, now we're going to do it for multivariable functions. How did you do it back then? Well, you had to go find critical points. So now we have to talk about what is a critical point in multivariable function and how do you classify it? So uh, this might be about three videos in this series so that it, they, don't, they each don't get too long. But um, first we have to make some definitions. Um, a local maximum in a multivariable function is going to be one where basically that function value f of a, b is the largest value for all points that are nearby in some region around that point. Um, outside the region, maybe it goes up higher, but locally though, what you have is a peak. Okay, we're gonna find out how to know when this happens and where it happens. And then flip that. A function of two variables has a local minimum at a point if it's the smallest value in some region around the point. Think of like a, a circle around the point and you wanna have all the all the values plugged into the function and the one that is the local minimum value is the z value that comes out when you plug the a b in basically here outside the region maybe it'll maybe it'll dip and become lower than that but locally though it is the minimum okay and it's the it's the minimum value of the function it's the z value that we're talking about local maximum value of the function Okay, great. Now, um, so there were critical points back in Calc 1, and you took the first derivative, you set it equal to 0, or you tried to find where the first derivative is undefined at. Well, now you don't have just a first derivative. You have multiple first derivatives. You have the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. So now they both have to be equal to 0 at the same time. Another way to say that is that the gradient vector must be zero because they're made up of the gradient vectors made up of these guys as their i and j and maybe later k components both the f x partial derivative with respect to x and the f sub y partial derivative with respect to y have to equal zero at that point for it to be a critical point also it could be that the um the the fx or the fy maybe uh does not exist as well that, that gives you critical points as well they have to be but for that does not exist though it it has to be yes your, your your partials don't exist but your function does like it can't be some point that's not in your domain and all of a sudden yes it's not in your domain of your partial it can't be both of those it needs to be in the domain of your original function but not in the domain of the partial okay all right great now we know that um if you do have a local min or a local max and it's sure that that the first partials exist then it must be true that the the fx the partial with respect to x and the f sub y the partial with respect to y at that point must be equal to zero if you throw away roman numeral two there then it has to be that both of those at the same time must be zero this is an if then statement it's called a conditional if you have a local min or a local max and the first partial derivatives exist then it must be that the first partial derivatives equal zero Okay, that's one direction. But see, what we like to do sometimes with these conditionals is run them backwards. And that's not the case. So, but yes, um, if this does happen, then you have what's called a critical point. The issue is trying to run it backwards. So, yes, if F has a local max or local min, it occurs at a critical point. But just because you have a critical point doesn't necessarily mean that you have a local max or a local min. Not all critical points lead to that. There are some critical points. We're going to learn, we're going to have to classify a new kind of critical point. Okay. And we'll do that on the next slide. But not all critical points lead to a local max or a local min. On the next slide, here's a function. Z equals one half of the quantity of Y squared minus X squared. At the origin, this function is zero. Okay. If you look in the direction of the X axis, this function it's gonna like you keep keep like y as a as a constant or have y equal to zero then you're looking at z equals negative x squared so you have like a parabola that goes downward so so you have a maximum in the direction of the x-axis 
But if you let x be equal to 0 and let z equal 1 half y squared, that's a parabola that opens upward. So you're going to have a minimum in the direction of the y-axis. Maximum and then minimum at the same time, depending on which direction you have. And so what this, call, what this is called is that the graph is in the shape of a saddle. You have your legs going around the part that is the maximum, and then you have the other part of the saddle running down the horse. That's the minimum where you're sitting at. It's called a saddle point. Here is a uh, visual of this particular function, and um, not just a static drawing, a static uh, pic. I wanted to have a, a video for you, so watch this video as I rotate so you can see the min and the max at the same time. The x-axis is the green, and the red axis is the, uh, no, the x-axis, sorry, is the uh, red, and the green axis is the y. Okay, so now we have a third type of critical point, a saddle point. All right, great. So how do we know? Um, you had some kind of test back in Calc 1 called the first derivative test. And you looked at how the derivatives change sign. And that can let you know local max, local min. But you also had something called the second derivative test. And that's what we can use an analog of in 3D. You see, the second derivative, though, when, like when it came to first derivatives, we had two of them. When it, when it comes to second derivatives, we have uniquely three of them because the mixed partials are equal. So if you want to create a second derivative test, it needs to involve all three of those guys. So if you do have a critical point, first go find your critical points. And then when it's time to classify them, then you want to look at the second partial derivatives. Okay. You create this, this uh, calculation. Uh, has many different names, um, but I'm going to call it uh, capital D for discriminant. But um, you might see it other places called the Hessian. It's this matrix where you have the double X and the double Y partials multiplied by each other. And then the mixed partial is multiplied by itself. It's squared. And so the, the, the calculation is based off of the second derivatives. And it has the same kind of connotations as our second derivative test did back in Cal 1. If you have a second derivative being positive, your function was concave up like a cup. So you, you had a min, but if your second derivative is negative, your function was concave down like a frown, so you had a max. Same thing is going to happen here um, if D is positive. We've got to evaluate, first find your critical points and evaluate this function D based off of the second derivatives at those critical points. When that value is positive, then you could look at the second derivative with respect to X, the double X. Then you can look at that, and the sign of that is going to be, be the way you dictate whether it's a local max or a local min. Okay, if your double x is positive, that's kind of like your concave up, like a cup, so your max. I'm sorry, your min. If your double x is negative, concave down, like a frown, so what you have is a local max. Now, it's the second derivative with respect is double x. It's the partial with respect to x, and then with respect to x again, that is the deciding factor. Why is it that one and not the double y? Um, maybe you could look into that and try to find that out. Like why? Why is it this is the one that's decided to be the, you know, the one that tells you the, the value? Um, that's when capital D is positive. When capital D is negative, when the discriminant is negative, you don't have to worry about checking the double x partial you know automatically then this is when you're going to have a saddle point. Okay, so D is positive, local max or local min based on double X. D is negative, automatic saddle. What's left over? If D is equal to zero, then actually you just don't have any information. The test doesn't tell you anything, and we have to search for some other kind of way to figure out what kind of critical point you have. Um, we generally, it generally doesn't come up, but just so you know that that's, that's what happens. All right. So that is the introduction to the definitions of local min, local max, how to find them, critical points, how to find them, how to classify them. In the next video, we'll look at some examples. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Remmer, helping you through this multivariable journey. Please comment um, down below, like, and subscribe. Reach out to me if you need any help. I'm here to help you through this, and I'll see you in the next video.